Hello, my name is Christina Weir and I'm your instructor for Biology 113 Lecture and Laboratory Online. First, I want to thank you for enrolling in the course. I'm looking forward to this semester and I hope you are as well. It's summer right now, it's July. I'm sitting in my home office so you can see my, my stuff around me. I have some pets. I've got a, a cat and a dog that like to walk around, especially when I'm making videos. So if you hear a cat or see a dog in the background or the foreground, um, I apologize in advance, but my pets love to help me uh, when it comes to making videos. I wanted to go over with you one of the materials that you're going to need in order to complete the laboratory course, and that is the lab pack kit. I'm going to adjust the camera a little bit. This is a small scale production video here. Here's the lab pack kit. I received mine in the mail uh, yesterday. And so, of course, it was packed in a bigger box, and in the bigger box was a smaller box. And what you're, oops, something fell out. And what you're going to hear me pronounce over and over again is the word lab pack, L A B P A Q. And so that's how that's pronounced, lab pack. And I wanted to go over the contents of what's inside with you. Uh, when you first unpack your box, uh, there's a, a couple things that you're going to be sitting, seeing sitting on top of uh, the actual kit. And the first thing you're going to see is something that looks like this. This is a return shipping label. In the event that you need to return your kit to the company, um, this kit uh, includes a return label. It's actually two sheets. Uh, a return label that is already pre-addressed to the company. So don't get rid of this. You might need it. The second thing you're going to see <clears throat> is a little CD-ROM. Don't get rid of this either because the CD-ROM is actually your lab manual you won't be receiving a notebook or a paper manual of any kind in order to be more environmentally friendly, save paper. The company instead has put all of the lab manual information on this CD. So don't lose this, don't get rid of it, you're going to need it. Um, there's also a little piece of foil. <laughs> there's nothing special about this foil other than it is part of the contents of your kit and they just packed it on top of the box because it was easy to keep flat that way. So put it aside. If you do happen to wrinkle it or tear it, um, foil is pretty easy to get a hold of. Um, so it's easily replaced probably by just what's in your own pantry. Uh, the next piece of information, it's actually two sheets. At the top of the first one, it's going to say your lab pack content list. Uh, once you actually start opening your kit, this is going to have a list of every single thing that's in there um, and it's by which lab it's going to be used. Now, I've gone over my kit and all of the contents were in there and I know that the lab pack folks are very conscientious about how they pack their kits, making sure that everything that they need is, is in there, but it's always a good idea to double check the contents anyway. The next piece of information you're going to see on there is a yellow card that at the top says emergency information. What Lab Pack recommends as a safety precaution is that you go ahead and you fill out the information as it pertains to you and then post this in a conspicuous place like your refrigerator or maybe a bulletin board wherever you do your studying uh, so that in the event that somebody needs to call um, a doctor or uh, some type of emergency medical service because something awful happened, which is very, very unlikely. But in the event that we do, this information will pertain to you and will make it easier to give information to um, the emergency response people. You're also going to see on top of your lab pack box is this white half sheet of paper that says right at the top in big letters, Notice for Biology Lab Pack BK1, which is the name of your kit biology kit number one. Uh, the notice, what it's telling you is that there are some test tubes inside of your kit that need to be refrigerated upon receipt of your kit. So I'm going to open the kit and show you what they're talking about. I'm going to adjust the camera a little bit. Alright, so you can see the lab pack and my collection of hats. Okay, here's what you're going to see when you open your kit. Um, inside you're going to have various little packages of um, little interesting looking bottles with different colored chemicals. In fact, there's going to be about four of these and they're all going to be labeled, you know, cell membrane transport. This one says macromolecules of life. 
Um, there's another one in there that says Gram Stain Kit. All of these chemicals are safe to store at room temperature. There's no reason to put them in the refrigerator, but you do need to make sure that you keep them um, out of reach of small children. The chemicals themselves are in very small quantities and are not um, dangerous in the quantities that they're sent, but we still want to minimize any risk to your household members. Um, also in your kit, right about here, you're going to see something that looks like a cosmetic bag. This is actually a dissecting kit. I'm going to open it up so you can see. Um, there's some really interesting looking, dangerous looking, and of course sharp instruments inside of your dissection kit. Now everything that's packaged in here is sterile. These are all brand new, not recycled. However, please be aware that the instruments that are in here are real instruments. This is a real scalpel that's packaged in here. So if you have small children in your home, you also want to make sure that this isn't something that they can get a hold of. It's not a toy. It's actually a, a, a scientific laboratory grade uh, equipment. Packed right underneath where you lift the dissecting kit is you're going to find, packed in bubble wrap, six glass test tubes. Now these are what, <laughs> there we go, this white sheet of paper is talking about. It says notice there's some test tubes and you need to put them in the refrigerator. It's these right here. Listed on the front it says microbes everywhere, which is the name of the exercise that you will use these for. It's important that you follow the instructions. Here we go. It's important that you follow the instructions to put this thing in the refrigerator. Do not put it in the freezer. That's not necessary. In fact, if you do that, you'll actually damage, and I'm going to open this up, uh, you'll actually damage the contents inside. Uh, the test tubes are sterile, meaning there's no bacteria inside of them. But if you look really closely, there's some stuff that looks like brown gelatin, and that's basically what it is, gelatin with a little bit of food in there. But the food is specific for bacteria. When these are prepared, just like in a regular laboratory, they're prepared under sterile conditions. So there are no bacteria in this test tube at this time. By putting this in the refrigerator, that'll accomplish two things. Number one, that will preserve these a little bit better, although it's okay to have them at room temperature. But if your house gets uh, unusually hot, um, then it's not good to have these just out. A refrigerator is better. And also, by putting them in the refrigerator, uh, you're less likely to get them contaminated um, because they're going to be out of the way. And since they're sterile, they're not going to hurt your food. Um, I would recommend, if you really want to, put them inside of a plastic baggie and then put them in your refrigerator. If for some reason you break the seal on one of these guys and you do introduce bacteria to them before you do the lab exercise, then keeping them in the refrigerator will keep any bacterial growth to a minimum. The other items in your kit that I want to point out to you because they're a little unusual looking, um, is your list is going to mention some trays. Okay, these are paper trays. They're okay to put in the trash when you're done with them. Um, there's also a little staining tray. It's a just basically a little plastic uh, bowl, a short little plastic bowl. Um, some things with some unusual names. There we go. This is a graduated cylinder right here. It's literally a long, tall measuring cup. And so it's going to be packed with these uh, iron ring looking things inside. And that's just for ease of packing. Um, you're going to see several plastic, these are called petri dishes. And a petri dish is actually made upside down so that the lid goes on the bottom. Uh, that's so that whenever you are handling a petri dish, you don't ever actually drop the lid because you're handling it um, by the top. And so petri dishes actually, when you use them, are really made to use upside down. So, um, you know, either way is okay for what we're going to be using them for, but this is a petri dish in case you see that on your list and you don't know what they're talking about. Um, another item in your kit, believe it or not, your kit includes a microscope. And this is not doesn't exactly look like the traditional microscope. Oh, I think I got a lot of glare on there. I'm going to change my camera angle. Okay. This doesn't look like a, a regular microscope that you expect to see like in a laboratory. Um, but this is a modified student microscope. I'm going to open it up real quick. It's kind of cute, actually. I was playing with it earlier. 
Um, so this is your microscope when you're looking through your uh, list and you're like, where's the microscope? It's this guy right here. A couple other things in your kit. You actually have, oh, you actually have a small scale. Okay, it's a little digital, little, it's not a digital scale. It's actually a, what they call a pen scale, a spring scale, right in here. Um, and you do have quite a few pieces of glassware, and by glassware I mean things are made of glass. They're all packed in bubble wrap. Um, just again, make sure that when you unpack your test tubes that you realize that they are made of glass, um, and if they're broken, you may need to contact the company for replacement items. This little guy right here, this little metal thing, which uh, if it was just a little bit bigger, ladies, you might like to use this to hold your lipsticks, <laughs> but it's not actually made for lipsticks, it's made for test tubes. This is the test tube rack. So when you're going through your kit again, if you're not sure what is a test tube rack, it's this thing right here with all the six holes on the top. Um, your apron, <laughs> it's rolled up all like this. This is a little plastic apron. It's really one-time use only. Um, there is nothing in your kit that, in my opinion, puts you at great risk for staining your clothing um, except for a couple of items. And those items, we, uh, when we get to using them in the semester, I'll make sure to inform you that that's something that would really require plastic gloves, maybe your apron, and also maybe wearing some old clothing because you never want to do lab stuff in your really nice clothing anyway. Uh, one last thing in your kit that you might have trouble identifying. This is kind of a, a cool little gadget. I'm excited to have one of these, but it's called a mortar and a pestle. These are ceramic, okay, they're not glass, they're ceramic, um, but this is basically a little bowl perfect for dipping salsa, right? <laughs> Actually, you don't use it for food afterwards. That's considered bad lab technique, so don't put any food in this. Um, and then the pestle is this thing right here, and I'll unwrap them. Okay. Okay. They're surprisingly heavy. They're real sturdy little pieces of equipment, but uh, when it's time to crush something, you put your item in the bowl and you crush it down with the pestle, just like this. Okay. Everything else in the kit is either well labeled or easily identified. Uh, I just want to warn you, those of you that are afraid of creepy crawly things, there is some specimens in here, some specimens to dissect. So again, um, keep this out of the reach of your kids uh, in case that we need to use them later in the semester. <laughs> so that's the introduction to the lab kit. Thanks so much, and I'll have another video for you talking about the syllabus and course expectations.